Coming in, you guys, I got Christy Harvell. She is a chiropractor who does functional medicine, talking about the healing power of nutrition. And she's on here today. We're going to bring her up here in just a moment. So thanks for being here today. Got a wonderful interview in store. It has been so good being back to interviewing again this week because I was so sick uh, all of last week. I didn't do any interviews at all. And so being able to be back on camera again, have my voice come back. Earlier in the week, I still struggled a little bit. And even yesterday when I was doing my update uh, on the stabatical, my voice was a little bit grovelly. And so <laughs> I'm glad to hear the voice is finally coming back pretty strong but uh, come on in, guys. We have Dr. Christy Harvell coming in. And uh, I told her as soon as I see her pop in, we will pop her up on stage. And just like that, here she is. So we will bring up Dr. Christy here on to a nice little conversation all about the healing power of nutrition. Hello, hello. How are you? Hi, I'm good. How are you today? I am super duper. So guys, this is Dr. Christy Harvell hey. on Instagram. She is Dr. Christy H. Christy spelled with a K-R. And I actually met you because I think your media person is somebody I know. Her name yes. is Lincoln. Stephanie's a really good friend of mine. She's a big super fan. It was funny because at one <laughs> of the conferences that I gave a talk at she was on the front row and she was smiling the whole time oh, yeah and she comes up after I'm your biggest fan and I was like <laughs> hi. hi no that's totally true she, I think I was at some keto conference and she was like you should have been with me you would have loved it so I was supposed to be right there next to her <laughs> yes, yes so uh always fun to have connections with people and she connected me with you I had yeah. not before in, in all honesty and so I'm really glad mm -hmm. that we have you on today to pick your brain a little more it sounds like you're really into nutrition and it's healing yeah. properly which is what my message has been for 17 plus years so why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself um you're a chiropractor and you're mm -hmm. in functional medicine and you use food as medicine uh oh we froze the story of how you yeah sure um I'm a chiropractor and I think probably like most people who come into the alternative world space, they probably have some kind of personal experience, you know, healing their body first and then get really passionate and want to shout from the rooftops and help as many other people as they possibly can. So, right. you know, I guess I would say that like I wasn't always the gleaming picture of health that I am today. I had to go through a journey and my journey ultimately, ultimately led me to chiropractic school. So people always ask that, you know, like, oh, was your dad a chiropractor? Or did you have doctors in the family? And I'm like, no, not really. I had to heal myself. And when I learned what true healthcare was, I was like, gosh, more people need to know about that. So yeah, I'm a chiropractor by trade, um, but really early on, I got interested in nutrition, you know, where medical doctors take pharmacy classes in in undergrad, chiropractors take nutrition. And so I loved all of those nutrition yeah. courses, but I think like you and your audience would agree, like nutrition can be overwhelming and super conflicting in itself too. I didn't really know how to bring it into practice, you know? And so I found kinesiology. So I do chiropractic kinesiology, and then we do um, nutrition response testing, but that allows me to really like individualize and customize how we approach nutrition with each person. So it's kind of cool. So let's dig into kinesiology because I'm a kinesiologist, and it's one of those terms that people hear it, they know of the term, but they don't really know what it is. Can you explain it in kind of layman's terms? Yeah, sure. It really is just a big fancy word for muscle testing. And so we use a muscle test or a strength test. Like in our office, we use an arm, like we push on arms all day long. And the muscle test gives us information about what's going on in the body. And you can use kinesiology, like we use it for nutrition, um, but you can also use it for emotional techniques. You can use it in physical therapy for actual strength testing. So it really just depends, but you know, our specific use of it is called nutrition response testing. So is that the neuro-linguistic testing where you test for different deficiencies of uh, various minerals and vitamins? Like if you push a certain way, right. 
get them sublingually some of that thing that you think they're deficient in? Is, is that what it is? There is some of that, but the cool thing is somebody smarter than I determined that we can put little glass bottle samples of the nutri nutrients just on the body and test. So patients love us a lot better for not putting all this yucky tasting stuff on their tongues. But yeah, the original kinesiologist made them taste every single thing. <laughs> oh, now you tell me because I remember uh -huh. when I was <laughs> testing, yeah, they'd stick like directly under my tongue mm -hmm. like zinc or something and it's just uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. but then yeah, the strength would get better because i became sufficient at least in that moment my brain was tricked into knowing that, okay now you have a sufficiency in this thing you've been deficient in exactly no that's totally true and there's just so much that we can tell you know being a chiropractor that kind of always made me realize like we want to be as proactive as possible and get in there when things are just you know starting to get out of balance we don't want to wait until an inevitable diagnosis or you know that things are so progressed that then maybe something natural like diet and nutrition isn't the only option for somebody and i really feel like the kinesiology part of the practice allows me to do that yeah, I feel like so many of the health issues we deal with, they're not physiological per se. They're just deficiencies in the foods we're eating and in the kind of uh, minerals and vitamins that we're lacking oh, yeah. in the diet. Like so many little things that people think are just little normal aches and pains, and you know a chiropractor and a kinesiologist, that those things are not normal. If you have yeah. them, that's your body screaming at you. That's right. Wrong. That's right. Those are all those little, you know, your body's always talking to you. I think we could probably, you and I both go off about medicine and that, you know, there's more to it than just wait for symptoms and treat that, you know, but the body's talking to you. And so, yes, prescriptions, there's side effects, they're listed, they tell you themselves that it's risky. But I think that the biggest long-term detriment of numbing the symptoms is that you get out of communication with your body like over a lifetime of suppressing those symptoms your body no longer talks to you and so yeah. it needs to really like scream and shout and shake you up to get your attention anymore you know that is such a good point that a lot of times people go to their doctor just get me out of pain yeah. rather than let's find the source of the pain and fix what's going on that's causing the, the symptom. Yeah. It, let's cover up symptoms. And if and if I cover up this pile of poo-poo with a blanket, okay, the poo-poo's <laughs> gone. It's all clean, right? All better. It's still under there. If you lift it up, uh, and if it stays <laughs> there a long time, it just gets even stinkier. And then the more you cover it up, the worse the problem gets. And that's kind of a descriptor of like what's happening in people's health. Totally. Right. And so we want to be as proactive and get out in there as soon as possible when things are just starting to unravel and get out of balance. And then, you know, so many things are reversible. And that's, you know, I just say, it's like, you know, I'm a stubborn Italian from New York. And so like, I never give up. Like the kids is like, do you think you can help this? Do you think you can help that? And I'm like, I'm sure as heck going to give it my all and try. But it's kind of cool, right? Like when you see testimony after testimony of all these crazy name things that people have been able to recover their health from your confidence level your good level of conviction comes up for like there's so much that we can do if people just only knew right yeah and i've had testimony after testimony on my podcasts over the years of yeah. people that all they did all they did christy was change diet maybe a few yeah. lifestyle modifications they were able to come off of medications they were able to heal their bodies naturally and this is something that even with this thing we're and i'm going to speak in code because i don't want to get banned on you, but this thing that we've been dealing with for the past year and a half a lot of people are like well the answer is found in having this thing put in your arm and it's like you you do realize your body has all the tools it needs mm -hmm. to properly deal with it and any other foreign enemy that might enter your body it's totally true. And that's our practice name is actually health by design. Cause we say you were uniquely and, you know, intelligently designed with everything that your body already needs in order to heal and experience good optimal health. When it isn't there, I just say, I'm going to simplify it and dumb it down. There's only two things that can go wrong. One, there's something in your body that shouldn't be there. Maybe it's a food or an, you know, some kind of food additive or something like that a metal, a chemical, some kind of environmental, environmental toxin, something's in there that shouldn't be, a pathogen, a yeast, a parasite, 
or there's something missing that needs to be in there. So you have a mineral or a nutritional deficiency. And that's all I do all day. I get the bad stuff out and put the good stuff in. And time and time again, the body heals. It's like elementary. <laughs> and I would dare say it's probably both many times that people do have parasites or other kind of gut dysbiosis and things like that going on because uh, of antibiotic use, because of a lot of things. I love it. Yeah. Metal exposure, chemicals in your house. Like I had to get rid of all the everything in my personal care products mm -hmm. um, and switching to essential oils and other kinds of things because right. I was noticing I wasn't feeling my best. Even though I was eating a very healthy diet, I wasn't optimal. And these are things that people forget about too, that mm -hmm. yes, healing does come through nutrition, but it's nutrition plus. There's a lot of things that you add to the nutrition so that you optimize what that food is doing for you. Yeah, you can kind of stack your results as well. And that can be overwhelming. You know, people hopefully listening, I'm always like, start somewhere. You know, yeah. maybe the food is the easy part. Maybe you can swap out your deodorant. Maybe you're not loving the toothpaste you use. Like, you don't have to have a full household personal care pantry makeover all at one time. But yes. just know that everything you're doing, consuming, exposing your body to is either cumulatively helping you or cumulatively harming you, right? Yes. Yeah, we forget the biggest uh, organ in the body is the skin. Yeah. We absorb all these things through the skin. And I used to cake on the aluminum underarm. Mm -hmm. and I would put it on because I would sweat like crazy. <laughs> I needed to do that. And then I get a toxicity level of five times the level of aluminum in my body. And I'm like, uh, uh. No, bueno. <laughs> I, yeah, so I switched yeah. over many moons ago now. Uh, and I finally found some that work that are more natural, coconut oil-based essential oils, baking yeah. soda in there. Um, and, and it's wonderful. And y you're right. Start somewhere mm -hmm. and methodically work it out. Like I, I, I've talked to people recently on this podcast and I you get rid of the dryer sheets, get rid of the bleach, get rid of. And so you just have to like slowly go, holy crap, that's yeah. something else. And it's not that. It's not that if you don't eliminate all those things, you're somehow a bad human being or something. Mm -hmm. You're just trying to optimize every little area of your life so that you open up the opportunity for optimal health. Right. Exactly. No, I love it. And that's something like they need education. You know, sometimes people say we have a very enlightened population of people that come to us and listen to us. So they know a ton. But even the people who know a ton sometimes just need you to kind of take them by the hand and lead them and educate them and hold them accountable until that becomes their new lifestyle or habits. Because it does take repeated time until now that, like, you would never go back, right? Like, you would never go back on the things that you changed in your life, right? Yeah. So you have to become convinced that it's worthwhile. There has to be some kind of, like, benefit attached to it for you to kind of be like, okay, this is worth giving up maybe something that you're addicted to food-wise or drink-wise, you know, and find healthier substitutions and alternatives. And I always encourage people to, like, don't look at it as all, like, deprivation and restriction and get rid of this and cut out that. We really teach a lot about what are the healthier substitutions. You can still live your life, you know, be a somewhat normal person if that's your goal. I don't know if anybody would call me normal. Maybe not you either, but I don't I, strive to be normal. <laughs> I am proud to be very abnormal. Thank yeah, you. you and me. <laughs> I'm cool with it. You know, but find, make it an exploration. Have fun with it. You know, try new recipes, try new ingredients. It's It can be a journey. It can be enjoyable. Yes, and... And part of the enjoyable is discovering the things that you thought you could never live without. Now, suddenly, you don't ever want those things you thought you could never live without. And let's let's shift to food, because I did put in the, the title, Healing yeah. of Nutrition. So what's your philosophy when it comes to diet? Diet. Well, I love what you said. You know, not there is no one-size-fits-all cookie cutter. And I think there's a lot of research and conflicting information, right? You've got the knives over forks and the China study people and then keto and carnivore. And you know, they both are claimed to cure all sorts of crazy conditions and help people and there's testimonies. And I say, well, what's the commonality? 
the commonality is there's no processed packaged stuff. There's no right. preservatives. They're eating real food. They've right. cut out so much of the garbage. And so <laughs> that's what's the truth. <laughs> I wish, thank you, Christy, for that. Because I wish we could coalesce paleo, primal, whole 30, vegan, vegetarian, carnivore, yeah. keto, Weston A. Price, all of the different like ones out there and just say, just eat real food. Like how hard mm. would it be for us to coalesce around that message? Because the vast majority of at least Americans and probably most of the westernized world is packaged crappy garbage is what I like to call it. Garbage. The refined sugars, <laughs> refined grains, uh, the refined fats, all of those things are doing just dastardly things in people's bodies. And if we just got them to eat real food, okay, you want to be mostly plant-based, go for it. You want to be mostly meat, go for it, but at least choose real food. How hard is that? Right. It's not once you find it, but you know, people's palate, if they've been eating all that refined thing, their body tells them that real food doesn't taste good. So if you're one of those people that have eaten a fruit or a vegetable or some kind of real food and you're like, oh, it doesn't taste as good, you've got a problem with your body chemistry. And once you've been on program or made these changes, you know, frequently enough and your body chemistry changes, you'll be amazed that your palate, your taste for real food changes. Yeah. That stuff tastes like garbage, you know? Yes, and people forget there are food scientists at these junk food companies. Their literal job is, how do we make this food more hyper palatable so you want to keep eating and eating and eating, and you literally have no satiety signal that yeah. kicks in? Guys, that is by design. So if real food tastes gross, and I, I can tell you, at one point I went from a junk food diet to a real food diet, and asparagus, asparagus was gross, yeah. but the asparagus became delicious. Yeah. Even like some meats that I had were kind of gross. Now they're very delicious. And so you mm -hmm. kind of like do acquire a taste, but you have to get your body and your tongue off of that hyper palatable food and onto what real food tastes like. And the biggest one that caught my attention, Christy, was I had no idea almonds were actually naturally sweet. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I got off of sugar for a while, and I remember having some, and raw almonds especially, having a raw almond and going, did they put sugar in this? Like, I had no idea almonds tasted sweet until mm -hmm. that hyper palatability on my tongue was gone, and now I could taste and enjoy the wonders of the real food. Oh, yeah, it's true. I, I remember the very first cleanse. Now I've been doing cleanses for over 20 years, but... I was like, let's try this out. And so after I got done with the 21 days or whatever it was at that point, you know, I would try some of the things that I had in my pantry, which wasn't as clean then as it is now, you know. And a potato chip literally tasted like rancid oil. I had like probably cheap chocolate around. All I could taste was like the paraffin wax. It was incredible to me. Yes. Back, yeah. in, the, back in the day, it was macaroni and cheese for me. My dad yeah. owned restaurants when I was a kid. And so he'd have macaroni and cheese on his little buffet bar. And so I used to pile it up. Oh, this is so good. I've had macaroni and cheese since I've come off of all the crap. And I just go, it has no flavor. There's like, it's nothing. <laughs> I could salt it up. It's still nothing. It just, it, I was like, why did I ever find that appealing? But you're right. And I think people... Sometimes you need to get a little bit angry with knowledge. You need knowledge and you need sometimes to be shaken up. But like, how can they get away with that? Like, how can they call that food? Like, how can they approve that that's acceptable? You know, people make the false idea that um, if it's sold in a store, it must be sa it might, must be safe for me because they wouldn't be able to sell it. Sometimes people kind of have to get their belief system shaken up a little bit and upset to kind of be you know, motivated to get these things out of their pantry for them and their family. Well, and look, these these companies that sell the junk food, they are very savvy marketers. Yeah. They have to put health claims. And I used to do this series on YouTube called Health Claims Gone Wild. I would <laughs> walk into a grocery store and just, for example, go down the cereal aisle. I remember coming up on Honey Nut Cheerios or something like that. And it said a good source of vitamin D, like really big letters on the front. Mm -hmm. And I turn it on the side, Christy, and I see 40 IU of vitamin D. And I'm going, 40 IU? Mm -hmm. Like 
five to 10,000 IU. <laughs> How is that a good source of vitamin D? Well, I guess they put a little bit of synthetic vitamin D yeah. in there and they plaster this claim. And so that convinces moms though, oh, I hear vitamin D is good for this. So let me get that for my kid. And that's how they keep people stuck on these products is they make all these claims that really at the end of the day, they're not telling you the negative claims of the things that are in it rather yeah. than synthetic vitamins they're adding to it. It's true. And my favorite one is heart healthy. That is totally paid. Like yeah. they bought, they bought the right to put the yeah. heart healthy label on there. And you would probably die if you hadn't already done it. If you go to like the American Heart Association's website or the Diabetes Association, I don't know what they're, if it's ADA, but okay. the food recommendations and the diets, like it's so high carb. It's all, all the, carbohydrates. I'm like, I, holy moly. <laughs> I will give props to the American Diabetes Association. 2018, they got a brand new president and she came in. She was a low carb success story controlling her diabetes. Yeah. She got them to add, not take away the existing diet, but to add another option for people that, hey, if you don't like the traditional high carb, low fat diabetes diet that we promote, here is a low carb option. So. There is slow change happening, but the American Heart Association, they are hopelessly lost. And yes, when I see that American Heart Health symbol on any product, I run the other direction because yeah. I know it's extremely not heart healthy. That's true. So that, just eat real food. And then, you know, listening to your body, I think people almost need to go through an exploration process of trying different styles of eating and then really getting in tune to their body that once you detox all the stuff out and get the sugars and the refined foods and additives out in your body, your chemistry is right. Where do you feel your best? How much protein and carb and fats does your body need? You don't need to do a keto monitor forever. You don't need to count macros forever. But you might need to do it for a while to start to know what, like, a healthy plate looks like. Then you can go by visualization, you know? And there's a lot about metabolic cycling, too. And so there's this is very true, I think, for women. Our hormone cycle, it's a lot more complicated than men. Well, let's face it, women, we're, we're complicated. We'll just say that. <laughs> There's many layers. And so what I find often is what worked for a woman three months ago might not be the magic cure this three months. And so there might be some cycling in and out of, you know, vegan, plant-based, keto, carnivore. And that's, that's something, too. It's like your muscles, right? You can't lift the same, like, 10-pound weight over and over for the rest of your life and think you're continually going to challenge that muscle and see increase in strength and appearance. You just – the body – works on challenge everything yeah, i like the idea of changing things up and i like your your kind of idea of maybe cycle in a plant-based day maybe cycle in a meat-based what do you think about fasting like total fasting water and salt only kind of fasting is that something you think could be helpful as another part of changing yeah. things up yeah, we actually just wrote this whole 90-10 lifestyle program, and we do take people through different phases of eating, and we have them, like, very descriptively journal so they know how they feel. And ultimately, we do have them work up to exploring intermittent fasting and different cycles of it. And that is probably where – it just depends on where everybody is, but I do believe in fasting. I fast every day. I'm just doing my first shake of the day now. And look, it's Steph's thing. She didn't even pay me to put that on there. That's, that's <laughs> definitely yes. My team whiskey. Shout out. Um, but yeah, so, you know, people might have to work up to that. That might not be a first step. And that has a lot to do with oh. listening to your body, too, you know? Well, that, that yes. Thank you for that, by the way. Yeah, don't jump into fasting because you heard it's the big thing. Right. Until you, until you sufficiently give yourself the macros and the micros that your body needs, your body won't be ready for fasting anyway. I, I wrote a book about fasting, by the way, called The Complete Guide to Fasting. Which yeah. um, and so in there, we talked about make sure that you have the sufficiency in all of your nutrition before right. you to go without food. Now, I've done this a little while, and I instinctively kind of fast for probably 16 to 18 hours ish a day and eat within kind of a tight window that's comfortable for me i can get one to two meals and it's very easy now right. but don't just start there so how do you get people off of kind of a junk food styled diet and started what what do you start them with what does it look like 
Yeah. Well, in for our in-office patients, we have the glory of the fun kinesiology thing. So we know what their food sensitivities are, and we would start with those inflammatory foods. Um, but other than that, it's gradient scale, and it is carbs. We put everybody on some level of carb restriction, and we kind of – I designated like a low-carb, medium-carb, and high-carb restriction. It depends on the person. If it's just general health and wellness, maybe they just need a level one carb restriction, and they can still do, you know, some of the legumes and nuts and seeds and fruits and veggies yeah. if somebody's like obese cancer some kind of chronic diseases they probably have to go more strict with their body they don't have time to play with it so it really just depends on what timeline but we go we play the we have food logs they're beautiful people hate them but they do them and that's really like when you put it on paper and you study it you see it. And so for us, we would set a goal every week. So say somebody is on a level one carb restriction and we teach them what those foods are. And we say now circle every time you eat a level one carb restriction and say their circles are add up for a whole week for like 30 circles. Okay, cool. You did that. No problem. No guilt, no shame. Do you think you can get it down to 27 next week? Oh yeah, right here. Like if I just like stop putting certain things in my coffee every morning, I could get rid of seven circles right there. Awesome. Totally doable. Do that. And it really depends. Like we had one guy, he literally was drinking over 12 Mountain Dews a day. So am I going to put him on keto or fasting or, you know, a level three carb restriction? Not right away. And so for him, it might be like, okay, you had 12 today. Can you do 11 the next day? Could you do 10 the next day? So we're very much teaching gradient scales, and that's different for everybody. Like yours and mine, if we were like, hey, could you fast for three days? I don't know. Let's see if I can, and we could jump in. Where somebody who I'm describing there would have to go really slow. And then if there's food addictions, you know, like caffeine and some of these substances, we really have to go slow. I think back to when I weighed 410 pounds and was – eating probably 1,600 to 1,700 grams of mostly refined carbohydrates in a day. And you told that boy to fast for three hours. Right. Three uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That boy would not have been happy at all. So. Yeah. And then we really like believe in applying. We called the whole new program that we wrote 90-10. It's like if you could look, stay on program 90% of the time, and reserve the 10% to live your life, then all that like self deprivation and self sabotage and negative head trash that goes along with failing on a program or, you know, overindulging on a weekend or feeling like overwhelmed because you were on BK and you totally like ate things you would normally not ever eat. It all goes out the window because you plan for it. It just was part of the plan all along. I have never understood this all or nothing mentality when it comes to diet people have one mess up they say a fell off the wagon or whatever right. they call it and they think everything that they've been doing up until that point right. is now undone and i'm going that makes no sense at all it's called just get right back on plan again i i've never understood yeah. the psychology of that how how do you how do you teach that do you just say hey it's just part of the process yeah and that's where i think having somebody to touch base with and be like, hey, it's just human nature. Like, you're just human. That's it. Diagnosis human. We all are. I don't know. But I think, again, it just might be that maybe their conviction level isn't there. Maybe they haven't done it long enough to experience a life transformation. And so, you know, they're like, whatever. I'm just going to go back to eating like crap because yesterday was yesterday. Whereas if it was you or I, you know, we, we just are more experienced in our journey than that, too. But I had think having somebody to come back and be like, okay, that happened, no problem. You know, just get back to what was working before. Do, you know, hit the delete button. And maybe it's just a permission thing. I don't know. Sometimes human nature does want somebody to tell you, it's okay. You okay. have to do that now. Get back on plan. And mm -hmm. I have people write me all the time. Literally, they say, oh, I messed up my keto diet. My, mm -hmm. I'm, I failed. I'm like, what'd you do? I had a piece of cake. Oh, okay. Okay, what what else happened? <laughs> I'm like, okay, here's here's the solution. Get back on plan. Right. Like it's not hard, and I I just I don't understand that mentality. I, and maybe it's because I've done it a long time. I've gotten to the point where I no longer see messing up as failing. I see messing up as okay. I chose to do something that I don't normally do. Yeah. I'm testing my body, huh? 
okay, I don't feel so good. Maybe I don't want to do that thing that mm -hmm. I did again. And it's a lesson for me for the next time that I'm quote, tempted to want to have something like that. I'll mm -hmm. remember, oh yeah, that piece of cake made me feel like crap. Right. You probably get some of the same food confessions that we get. We call it, it's really a treatment room, but we call it a confessional sometimes. That's like, the, somebody taught me like, I didn't know you could buy one slice of cake at a time at our local grocery store. I was like, oh, that's, I did not know that, but now I do. But yeah, it's, you're right. You know, my husband and I, we teach that 90-10 lifestyle. But like for us, it's probably really like 95-5 or 98-2. Like, because it's just not worth it. Like, we don't right. want to feel like crap. We know what it's like to be vibrant and top performing. And so like, I don't want to show up Monday morning having to suffer through, you know, suffer through it and not be fully present and in the moment. This is why a lot of the people that follow my work, they love keto, they love carnivore, because those foods are very palatable and taste good. Mm -hmm. They're low in carbs, but they have great deliciousness when it comes to the fat and protein. And so people enjoy that. So when you enjoy the foods that you get to eat in the day to day, it makes your propensity to want to go off plan obsolete because you're enjoying your plan. Why would you stop something? Mm -hmm that you enjoy, plus knowing, having the knowledge that going back to one of those other foods will just sabotage your efforts in enjoying the regular foods that you have. So that kind of keeps you on plan as well. Yeah. Well, and there's two kinds of people. I mean, there's lots of kinds of people, but let's keep it to two. <laughs> and they, people are either motivated towards a reward, a positive, or away from a negative, you know? And so if people never put two and two together that those foods made them feel like crud in the first place, then it's hard for them to give it up or suffer through the withdrawal of the food. And then the other thing is, you know, making sure there is satisfaction. So if you get to the point where you're only eating two meals a day, you have to make them count. You know, they have to be pleasurable. They have to be not only fill your bot, your stomach up and fuel your blood sugar levels and give you, you know, energy and proteins and fats to burn, but you also have to have that you know, texture and different flavors and using spices and seasonings. And so in a lot of the recipes that are in our programs, we make sure to incorporate flavor and layers so that when you have something, it doesn't, you know, I love like people are like, oh, I'm supposed to just eat twigs and berries the rest of my life. And I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> you know, what has helped me a lot is getting closer to the source of my food. So I have backyard chickens. I mm -hmm. have that I buy from locally from the farmer's market. So I've got pork and beef and, and mm -hmm. fresh vegetables when, and, and, and different things. So all of those are available to me. I know where they're from. Yeah. It's this kindredness when you are closer to your food rather than buying some, you know, plastic box full of whatever. Right. I know where my food comes from and it makes you appreciate it more. And mm -hmm. quite frankly, it tastes better. Yeah, we have um, tower gardens that we use and we have family members or families in the practice that use them and the kids love it. They love getting involved and growing their food and seeing what's growing and harvesting it. And those kids are, want to eat like healthy, you know, fresh, real food because they have an appreciation, just like you said, of where it comes from. But then you contrast that with like, I remember when my stepson was younger, he asked me if he could eat fruit roll-ups. And I told him, if you could find the fruit roll-up tree where it got, you know, where it got picked from, then I would buy him fruit roll-ups. And he was just like, huh, what? I'm like, yeah, well, that's not, like, that's so processed, no. <laughs> Mama used to buy those things for us. And, and we thought they were so healthy because they were fruit, had fruit in the title. And so... Mm -hmm start looking at like all the ingredients in that leather that leather fruit and you kind of go oh man yeah. there's really no fruit a few fruit puree and apple yeah. flavor and it's just it's a weird concoction mm -hmm. to make those things of course you have the fruit isn't it <laughs> it's got like pumpkin spice has no pumpkin in it whatsoever oh, yeah yeah we're rolling up on pumpkin spice so stay tuned for like you can actually just put some spices in your stuff and yeah. make it. But I think people get intimidated. You know, like people don't, they, they don't want to spend like 
four hours of meal prep and chopping things and learning how to cook and everything. And so I think finding a sustainable way to bring the food and prepare it and use it is important too. And so we try to teach that. I always say like, for the people that know me, like, do you think I'm busy? Do you think I'm a busy person? And they're like, yeah, it's crazy. You're all over the place. And I'm like, right. But it has now become a non-negotiable for my household. Like, we are going to have meals and food on hand for the entire week because it's not worth it to us to skip a meal or to go grab something convenient or to have something processed from a restaurant with weird, you know, oils in it. And then that just throws off the whole rest of the week. It's like a snowball effect, you know? So finding a way to do it that doesn't take up your whole entire life. And I am a testimony that it can happen. <laughs> I have a friend and she buys groceries once a week for her family of five. Yeah. And she meal preps for about three to four hours. So she's yeah. got all these meals in, in all these containers and they're just ready to go all week long for her. <laughs> young kids and her, her family. And yeah, it makes life easier. If you get in that discipline, I think our culture has taught us, oh, just go through the drive through Oh, just pick up something quick from the store. And, and that's why the convenience foods still are so prevalent. If we got people out of the convenience mindset and made them realize just a little bit of investment in time, you can have convenience all week long of your own choosing. Yeah, for real. And that's that whole like quick fix mentality. Unfortunately, you know, I would say like, I'm not the what I have to tell people isn't the most popular. It's not like they are happy with what I tell them. But the good news is like, it can fix them. It can help if they all adopt it and work alongside of us. You know, we can't do all the work for people for sure. They have to. That's the thing with natural medicine. And some of the things we talked about, like the person has to have a willingness and like, to come along with us and do the things, right? <laughs> oh, that's essential. If you don't get the buy-in from your patients, how are they ever gonna change? You can't change them, right. they have themselves. Yeah, for real, yeah. So Stephanie had an interesting comment. She was talking about those little cheats and when you kind of go off plan, she's like, you need to treat it like Las Vegas. What <laughs> happened yesterday stays in yesterday i love that i love it's that so funny yeah just put it on your little log put it in your drawer put it away lock it away yes yes fun. i was looking on your bio and again you guys she is dr christy h d r k r i s t y h over on instagram but you have a podcast that caught my attention called weird works yeah that well, obviously, we do unconventional things in the practice. We talked about the weird muscle testing thing. And what I say every day is like, we acknowledge the weirdness, we embrace it, and then we do it anyway. And so the Weird Works podcast is just to bring other people on to to kind of like demystify this whole alternative world so that people can really get educated on what their options are and open their minds to the fact that like, there's a lot of credibility. This whole world that you and I live in and the people that we meet, people are healing their bodies of all sorts of things. And it's not mainstream. And unfortunately, that message is getting censored and deleted. And so, you know, we just need to get the words out there of what could work. You know, anytime there's some kind of sickness or discomfort in my family, I'm like, thank God we know all the things that we know. You know, like I feel bad for people that don't have all these remedies and know what to take and have a nutritional background and have, you know, clean foods and healing things in their, you know, medicine cabinets. Our medicine cabinet has no medicine in it, by the way. It's all oils and herbs and <laughs> tinctures and food. But yeah, I mean, there's just so much that you can do. And so I hope that the Weird Works podcast is a conversation for people to kind of explore that. Yes, and uh, always having that kind of alternative health uh, message, that's something that's very interesting to me. So I will definitely be checking out. Yeah, your um, yeah uh, speaking of kind of weird works, my mom has been dealing with kind of a chronic knee pain issue for a little while. And I said, Mom, have you heard of CBD oil? And she yeah. said, what? And this was like a year ago. And I'm like, Mom, CBD oil. She's like, what's that? And I'm going... Hey. <laughs> well, about CBD since 2011. Now, obviously, 
now it's everywhere. There are stores literally everywhere with it now. But like the fun part of being in this space is I see things long before they become a mainstream trend. Even keto, I was one of the first people that started talking about keto very openly, like 2011, 2012 was when yeah. I started really openly talking about it. And then suddenly 2018, 17, 18 is when everybody went crazy about keto. Um, and so I was telling her about the CBD and she said, well, I guess I'll have to try it. And she tried it, Christy, and it took the knee pain away like instantly. Isn't that awesome. Outside and put a little bit yeah. of stuff and she got the benefits. Yeah. And that's the thing. My hope is like people just open up their minds and start exploring, you know, and asking questions and advocating for themselves. There's so much truth out there to be found, but you have to be looking for it. So as someone in the alternative health space, how long have you been doing this, by the way? <laughs> I've been doing this for 18 years. That sounds really weird. You no, know, you're longer than me. I've been at it for 17 years as an educator. I'm not a practitioner, but yeah. as an online educator, 17 years. And I, I feel like I'm the old guy sometimes. So just, <laughs> hey, y'all yeah, need to cut the carbs out there. You know, and kind of like get the message out. But <laughs> I feel like... People are just shocked when they find out that people like myself, like mm -hmm. you, like Dr. Mm -hmm. Marcola, mm -hmm. like we're being, we've long been silenced yeah. by powers that be. They don't want people to get healthy naturally. Yeah. Um, do you sense that? Do you feel that like on a daily basis? I do. Yeah, that was one of the podcast episodes we called the censor, censored, the cancel culture. Yeah, the people that are getting censored and um, taken down in the message, it's me, it's my people, you know, it's me, it's, I have been sure, and my colleagues, because unfortunately, there's no money in getting people healthy. There's a lot of money in, in getting people sick or convincing them that they have a lifelong, you know, condition and they just need to live with it or that medication and surgeries are the only answer or that they need to take a medication for the rest of their life. And so we kind of refute that. <laughs> and that's why I tell people, be skeptical of what you hear yeah. when it comes to anything regarding your health. And so if you hear something very axiomatically that you must do this, that mm -hmm. this is the only way, that this is the way to go, question it. Yeah. And if nothing, if we've learned nothing over the past year and a half, hopefully it's that. So <laughs> question everything you're being told, what's the science behind it, what supports it? Because like a lot of the things that we talk about in our respective works, mm -hmm. we science that supports it. There's a lot of science. So oh, yeah. carbohydrate restriction and, and ketogenesis mm -hmm. as to your health. And yet those things are so heavily vilified. And it didn't just happen the last couple of years. Those things have been happening for decades. Right. And so for us to just pretend like, well, uh, the powers that be have our best interests in mind, they've never had our best interests in mind. No, they have their pockets in mind. And that's just a sad truth, you know? Yeah, ask questions. I'm gonna see if I can say this. You, okay. So two weeks ago, we did a, 91 Divec, is that how you say it? Divec lecture. So if the, it's your audience, they would know what that code stands for. Another way, the Black Plague, you can say that as the well. Black Plague. We did a Q&A about it in the practice because the fear was rising here locally in Jacksonville. And I was sensing it and I was like, I've got to get everybody centered. We've got to be a point of stability. Let's get some truths. Let's make a game plan get people comfortable that they, they're doing something about this. <laughs> and we gave them a whole list of resources, but it's, you know, I said, none of this is mainstream. And so I just, people would come to me and they're like, oh, I decided to get the, you know, or I went ahead and did whatever. I think I'm gonna start wearing a mask again. I did my research, they would come to me. I, I but I researched it first and I always say, okay, cool. Like, where did you research it? And you did not research it thoroughly. If you only researched one side of the story, and if you only continually researched the same message, even if it came from multiple sources and multiple mouths, that's not research. To fully research something, you have to be looking at two sides of the coin. You have to be willing to hear both sides of the story. And then and only then can you make an informed decision. Look, that's the way it's always been before mm -hmm. the 
couple of years. Uh, by the way, get off of Google if that's your source of researching. Definitely go to DuckDuckGo. Uh, yeah. Means of searching. Rumble is a great video site mm -hmm. to search for things. And so, yeah, you, you really have to look outside of these mainstream narrative sources if you're going to find the information. And the, the unfortunate thing that's happened, Chrissy, is it's kind of pitted like rational thinking, common sense people against people that buy into the message carte blanche. And it's like, there's just this division between them. And that's unfortunate to me because it's like, I'm not your enemy because I choose not to get the hokey pokey. I'm mm -hmm. not your enemy. I, I'm yeah. choosing body autonomy and, and freedom of choice for the individual. And I, and I support your choice of whatever you decide to do. It's none of my business. Right. And so it's just unfortunate that there's become this us versus them mentality with all of it. And some of that came from the messaging that's out there, this whole do your part. I'm doing my part. It's not what you expect me to do, but don't tell me that you're more responsible than I am because you just went and stood in the line and had somebody do something to you when we're proactively teaching things you can do to improve your own health and well-being and protect and defend you. Like, that all is capable inside of your own body you know so I think a lot of the division came from that but the way I'm explaining it to my patients is that you know because there's also pressure coming in amongst family members it, you know the older population is telling the younger population like you can't visit if you don't do this certain thing or whatnot and so that's very dividing and what I want people to understand is that what you do for your own health what you do for your own body is what protects you no matter what we're talking about. What I do for my health and what I do to my body is what protects me. I Nothing that I do, eat, take into my body, exercise, helps you in the least bit. And a person who is not exhibiting symptoms of sickness cannot make you sick. Yeah. I, that one is the one that gets me the most is you, you don't have any symptoms, and yet you're a carrier who can make someone else sick. It's like e even the, the grand wizard, Dr. The F word guy, uh, even he has said, no, nah, it's almost next to impossible if you don't have any symptoms that you can pass it on. Yeah. Well, and that's the other di very dividing thing that's happened over the last couple of years is the messaging in this is that people are dangerous now, you know, and so the fear, that's how the fear factor comes up. And Maybe yeah. the only other encouraging thing I could say on that is that just know what's happening. When you feel anxious and you feel fearful and you feel tension in your body, there's conflict. And that's probably a really good time for you to tune in and ask the question, like, is there truth in this? Where is my stress and tension coming from? Maybe this isn't the truth and it's in conflict with, in conflict with something that I believe or hold valuable. And explore that. Yeah, and, and trust your own instincts. Like, I, I, I hate this idea of we should just be following what some guru has to say. I am not a guru worship, worshiper. I, I interview all the biggest names in health all the time, and so I have access to all of them, and they're yeah. in But none of them dictate what Jimmy Moore does at the end of the day. I'm going to choose what I think is best for me based on my own research and my own rational conclusions about my particular circumstance and so okay. wish more people took that philosophy yeah and, the, and and i don't know why people think they have to hate or judge others for having a different opinion like in all of history in my entire life in most people's entire lives like we all know we already disagree that's why there's different political parties that's why there's different religions like we already knew we disagreed. So when all of a sudden did disagreement turn into hate or I can't be your friend or we can't hang out or I don't talk to you anymore? Like it's just been taken to a whole new level. Well, I refuse to participate in the division. I try to be a uniter. I try to encourage people. Mm -hmm. And even if you disagree with me, I, I don't hate you. I will embrace you and I'll have discussions with you. But at the end of the day, we're still Americans, we're still human beings, and it's okay. It's okay. Don't believe like me. In fact, it would be a very weird world if all of us believed exactly the same thing about everything. What a boring world that would be. It'd be boring. We'd have nothing to talk about. Yeah. Yes, I agree. Oh, I agree with you. Oh, I agree too. And it's like, huh? <laughs> I know.
know, but that would be weird. That would be wild. Because I am, be, I challenge everything. I think your mindset, like when you're a researcher and you have a mindset for this, like you kind of challenge everything, right? Yeah. So I don't know. I don't think I would work in that world. <laughs> So before I get you out of here, uh, which again, thank you for being here today. Um, I want to tell you about this thing that I'm starting September the 1st. So I'm going to go on a hundred day journey where by doing the nutrition that I've been doing for a little while, but I'm going to really dial it in tight where water, salt, and then the foods that I eat in my diet, which is kind of mostly an animal based kind of diet. And I, every other day I'm going to fast okay. and then to flip a tire every other day, but then every day, infrared sauna, red light therapy, cold thermogenesis, uh, vibration plate, grounding, meditation, sunshine exposure, walking twice a day. What do you expect is gonna happen for me? I think you're gonna be bionic. You're gonna feel better than ever. Yeah, you might get a little tired of it. <laughs> That's the only thing. But it's every day that you feel better and better. It'll it'll be interesting, right? So like we were just talking about people's gradient scales. And so it'll be a new gradient for you. So there will be some discomfort and you might second guess that you're going to go through a journey that some people who are just only starting their nutritional well-being out today are going to go through in a different way. You right. know, you're going to have a lot of inner turmoil and talk and everything, but ultimately it's going to be amazing. It's going to be powerful. Thank you. Is it going to be more mentally challenging than physically? I don't know. What's your physical fitness level? <laughs> I mean, I'm a big boy, so I mean, yeah. I, but I do all of those things. You're active already. Yeah. Not sequence and regularly, but yeah. I do all of those things. So it's not like any of those things are uh, foreign to me, but doing them all in the same day, every day for 100 days in a row, I have never yeah. done. Are you going to journal all the whole time? Yeah, I'm a journal at all. Yeah. Yeah, so. It's the same. Like, you're going to learn what your body responds to and really likes and is the most powerful and what you're like, hey, I thought that was really helpful or maybe it was to me at one time and maybe I don't really need this this part anymore. Like, maybe it served its purpose for once and, like, I'm over it. That's true. There will definitely be things that will probably fall after the 100 days are done. Mm -hmm. And then maybe things that I say, okay, that was challenging. Let's try some new cha challenges. And I think challenges, mm -hmm. challenges beget challenges. It's totally true. But that's how the body works. You know, that is how physiologically you grow and you get stronger. Your immune system responds to that. Your bones growth and cells work like that. Your hormone health works like that. So like without challenge, your body really doesn't improve. So I don't know, you're just gonna have like, extra I don't know. You're just going to have tons of growth. It's going to be fun. We're well, going to go on the journey with you, right? One more time. I said, we're going to go on the journey with you, right? Yeah. So I'm doing the first 50 days by myself. And then I'm inviting people to come up with their own challenge. I'm not telling them to do what I do. When I posted about it, people are like, I don't have an infrared sun. I'm like, don't, don't do what I'm doing. This is my challenge yeah. for a very long time. So I knew doing all those things would kick my ass basically. And so that's what I wanted. I wanted to be challenged myself, but maybe just somebody uh, and somebody was saying the other day, they wanted to try to do a pull up. So they're going to work yeah. on pull up for 50 days in a row to see if they can do one. And that, exactly. I think. That's one. Yeah. And that's like, we're all unique and individual and what we need is different and our, you know, potential for growth is different. So yeah, I love that you're challenging people to do their own, figure out their own. It's cool. Yeah. Yes, yes. So guys, that is Dr. Christy Harvell. Go check her out. Dr. Christy H over on Instagram, D-R-K-R-I-S-T-Y-H. And thank you to my friend, Stephanie Link, for hooking us up. She was a delight, Stephanie. I appreciate you hooking oh. me. Uh, do you have a website, by the way? Is it healthbydesignfl.com? Yep, that's for our Jacksonville clinic. And then if you don't mind, I'll give you the website for the online because you have people that aren't going to be local to Jacksonville. And that's 9010lifestyle.com. 9010lifestyle.com is the website. Yes. Guys. Yep. Go check her out. Christy, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. I had a wonderful time. I will definitely thank Steph again and again for making the introduction. You're a pleasure. And I really appreciate being on your show. 
Thank you. And guys, thank you so much for watching. We'll be back again real soon. Bye, guys. Bye.